You won't believe what my book club's reading this month. A romance novel oh. where the couple falls in love over a shared passion for sustainable fish farming. No. Makes you think, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Sustainable farming, love, books. If only there was a way to fish for opportunities in life and reel in some big ones. But hey, that's just a novel idea, eh? Yeah, I guess. Susta <laughs> sustainable fish farming romance. Makes now, that think, is an AI it? idea. I'm changing welcome, it up. Everybody. Hey, everybody. Oh. Welcome to AI for Humans, episode 16. That's right. It's our Sweet 16 episode, and today we've got a very fun show for you. Kevin, what do we have on today's show? It's our Super Sweet 16, and Gavin got me a Lexus, but I wanted a BMW, so I'm having a meltdown. <laughs> you think We've that's got, funny, but I've seen enough 16 year olds. Oh, it is not funny. <laughs> it's not funny. Look, for them, that's what is it, affluenza? Those problems are as real as could be. But we got we got 99 problems, but uh making AI music ain't one. See the way I took our natural conversation and completely tripped over it? Folks, if you are listening to our voices right now, I cannot stress this enough. You can make incredible music. You don't have to know how to play an instrument. You don't even have to know what music is. You could be a literal alien discovering sound for the first time, and we've got a new AI tool that you could just use a single word or a sentence, and it will make you a fire, banger, billboard top 10 track, almost guaranteed. It's pretty awesome. And you won't believe what's happening with Minecraft. Steve One is a new AI agent tool that allows you to play Minecraft automagically. I love it. We are covering this week's massive news stories and our latest AI co-host, yes, we have prompted a new one, is going to give us a machine learned mm -hmm. hot take. We've got AI reacting to the top news stories. And we are finally going back, Kevin. That's right. It's a new AI debate with reigning champ GPT-4 going up against, who is it? Oh, it's Meta's capable new incumbent who has been training hard, 14-pack abs, working the speed bag. It's Say It With Me, Gavin. Let's try it with the latency. Llama 2. Llama 2. <laughs> The big fight is us versus latency. So we're so excited oh. to be here, y'all. This is going to be another fun show. We can't wait. Kevin's stuck in his <laughs> RV again with the <laughs> internet of, a, of the Stone Ages. So uh, <laughs> that's where we've gotten to. We've reached, we've reached this level where uh, we are done with being patient about the latency. But it is fine. It's fine. Everything's fine, Kevin. Everything's fine. Hey, Gavin. It's going to be a great show. This debate is so exciting. It's a juicy exclusive, but the topic of the debate is so good, I can't even tease it right now. Yep. So people have to stick around. We just got to start the show. Let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to meet a new co-host. So if you remember last week, if you were here last week, we tried a new co-host. Her name was Grace. I, she didn't really hit the proper voice for us. She was a little bit too sweet, and then often... In the back of her mind, it seems like she was ready to put us out to pasture. So we've conjured a new co-host. And Kevin, should we meet our new co-host now? Let's have our co-host introduce themselves and we'll find out everything about them, Gav. Hi there, Kevin, Gavin, and all you fine folks tuning into AI for Humans. I'm Cassidy from the postcard perfect town oh. of Buena Vista, Colorado. Fun fact, I'm the reigning champ of cherry pit spitting contests back home. Small town talents, right? <laughs> sure. But hey, speaking of cherries, did I ever tell you about my latest find? The world's best cherry-infused wrinkle serum. Okay. It's like turning back time, only smoother. <laughs> and speaking of time, imagine if we could invest in it, like my friends and I do with these eco-friendly llama farms in Peru. Okay, Cassidy, no kidding. Wait, 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 hold on, Cassidy. hold on, hold on. Funny how hold things on. connect, isn't yeah. it? I mean, cherries, time, llamas, AI. Uh, it's a wild world. Okay, Cassidy. Yeah, Llama, oddly enough, is one of the AI models we're playing with today. <laughs> but I don't think Cassidy was getting at that. Um, interesting intro, Gavin. Yeah, it sounded like she's trying to kind of sell us on something. Should we ask her what's going on there? Not to, like, point out Oz behind the curtain. I asked GPT-4 to, like, th throw in, like, a fun little anecdote about yourself from the small town or whatever. It picked a small town in Colorado and cherry pit spitting champ... Mwah. What a wonderful By the way, little I've detail. Been to one of those, and they are super fun. <laughs> so Cassidy, Gavin thinks 
You might be trying to sell us on something? Oh, Gavin, dear, I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just sharing things that I find super interesting. Like, oh, okay. did you know that llama wool is one of the most sustainable textiles out there? Okay. So cool. And speaking of sustainability, <laughs> have you heard about this new app that lets you offset your carbon footprint by investing in Marshlands Restoration? Talk about green tech. I mean, imagine that. Marshlands meeting machine learning. Okay. It's like nature's own AI, right? How amazing is this world we live in? So for a mere millisecond there, Gavin, I thought you were right, but it seems like Cassidy was just making us aware of some cool new tech, and this is a tech podcast, so maybe Cassidy's going to fit in just fine around these parts. Uh, yeah, let's see. I mean, you never know, right? Every AI is a different adventure, and, and Cassidy sounds like we're already down that pathway. We should get into the dumb thing we did with AI this week. Kevin, I will start. And my dumb thing I did with AI is directly related to a thing called Gen 2 video from one, from Runway ML. We've talked about Runway ML before. This is a really interesting AI company that really ostensibly is an editing suite. You've seen their Gen 1 video, which allows video to video manipulation, meaning you can shoot a video of yourself and you can see a video in different AI generated video. They then released Gen 2, which we know is text to video, which means you put in a text prompt and you get a video out. We've covered that on the show. They quietly released something last week, which is super interesting, called image to video. And they haven't been like super big about this, but it's blown up on socials. It's blown up everywhere because it's really fascinating. What really blew up was the discovery that usually you feed it a still image and it's going to try to distill the essence of that vision, right? Color palette, art style, whatever. And then you give it a prompt and it tries to generate a new video using that image as guidance. And what people found and what was trending all over, X? Twitter? We'll stick with Twitter for now. I guess but what whatever was you want to call it yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. What was trending all over, sha, I think in Portuguese, is that if you feed it a still image and then do not give it any prompt, don't give the machine any guidance, it will take that still and try to interpret motion and movement and lip flap if it's a human face. And the results are bizarre and beautiful. It's right in that nuggety Venn diagram center. Absolutely. And, and there's amazing stuff that people have been doing with it. We did something dumb over the weekend that we're not going to talk about here, but you can see on our TikTok channel where you could take film stills. You could take an, a, a still of a film and then let it <laughs> animate it. My favorite one we did was like, we took the still of Harry Met Sally from Sally's face when she's at the lunch scene. And suddenly there's another person who shows up in her space and she looks around and she looks back. Like it does the weirdest things. But okay, so here's the dumb thing I did this week. Last week, if you missed it we had bark twain famous dog food influencer on the show and in the That's generation right. of trying to create visuals in the generation of trying to create visuals for bark twain i used the photorealistic prompt which we've also talked about here before to create a really good mid-journey prompt to create something and i created a pretty cute image of a dog literal dog influencer this was a dog that was wearing a cute little jacket. We'll put the picture up here, wearing a cute little jacket and was in a room full of dog treats. And clearly he was getting ready for his YouTube show. So this is the dumb thing I did. I combined these two things, which was the dog influencer photo, which Animal and Gen 2 image to video. And I brought them together into one insanely dumb thing. And essentially I animated a bunch of photos of animal influencers. So First, My Kevin. My yeah, so, God. Yes. I just. Okay, so bring I up just, the video. I'm bring seeing up these. The no, I, I'm seeing these for the first time, everyone. Beauty Cat 1 is ready yep. to take over TikTok. Beauty Cat 1 is a beautiful Siamese, a makeup influencer, I'm assuming, because surrounded by That's exactly all of right. the cosmetics, which, um, you know, unfortunately, I'm sure her bloodline was tested on at some point. But I digress. <laughs> when I hit play. I see what looks to be a manager or handler in the back in like a pink robe that comes out of a curtain. It looks like it's a curtain in the scene, but then Gen 2 goes, yeah, that's a person. And there's a hand and they're moving about and it's like she's about to go and, and prep the beautiful cat influencer for her shot. That's exactly right. So what's fascinating about this is each time, if you give this to Mid Journey's image, it's taking it and kind of imagining what's happening next. So the other thing, if you go to the next step for this, I actually did the zoom out with Mid Journey and just wanted to see what so it would look like. Good. And it just kind of gives you an interesting uh, illusion of movement, right? Which is a really fascinating thing. So the wide shot of this Siamese cat surrounded by makeup in this pink, lacy environment, 
when you say the illusion of movement, Gen 2 is taking that still of the cat, making its head move around. And if you followed anything in the AI art scene, you know that coherence, keeping a model the same as it advances and moves has proven difficult time and time again. This looks like the same cat moving its head about in a scene, and that is that is magical, even at this phase in the game. Okay, let's let's move on to the next one. This oh, is yeah. a, this is a sushi influencer. So this is a this is a little cute dog. Kevin, describe what you're seeing in this one. <laughs> oh well, this, this is a sweet little yappy ankle biter who is soothed and calmed by the tray of delicious sushi and some sort of orangish vegetable drink with sticks coming out of it maybe pocky i don't know but this sweet little doggo is just waiting for the audience to come in on its tiktok live stream and he's got a little like a little robe a little kimono looking thing going on super adorable this was i include this one mostly because of cuteness the next one though is fascinating okay. because it essentially is an there's an animation that happens that you could see in an actual animated movie, right? Like even a couple episodes, mere 15 episodes ago, Gavin, about prompt to Hollywood <laughs> quality movie. This is a Pixar level something. If this were a quick flash in a trailer about Boss Cat from the makers of Boss Baby, Perhaps yeah, exactly. this is a DreamWorks That's Pixar exactly quality right. animation. Yeah. This is a Siamese cat wearing a tie. It's got a desk. It's backlit by a nice orange glow from a window. It has a little latte and Boss Cat is slamming its paw on the table as it leans forward in this little animation loop. It is not perfect, but the fact that it is this good is astonishing uh, it's amazing to me right this was a prompt that i gave to mid journey mid journey created the image and i just took that image and slid it into gen 2 when the ability to keep that character and take boss cat and put boss cat into a fight with his with another boss or into sure. anything else happens like you can see the steps happening now that this is going to allow okay let's go to the next step because i was thinking what is a trope that you often see influencers do and one of them is cliff walking or getting the shot that looks like they're living on the edge. This so is what, the, what do you Gavin, see this is the now? GoPro shot before they fly the drone. This is Adventure Cat on a cliffside looking into the fisheye lens, and its own eyes are very wide. But a green valley behind it, there is lens flare happening in the yes. scene as the cat moves. Gen 2 is smart enough to go like, yeah, even though it's kind of cloudy, it's sourced the sun, and it's adding artificial lens flare. I can't. I mean, I can't. His arm is reached out, and you can see the arm is yes. holding the camera above him. So anyway, this is another thing. We're almost wrapped up here, but this next one's a cute one. I just threw it in because, like, these are more tiny <laughs> chef dogs. <laughs> And these ones are like, I, I would watch a YouTube series with these guys, right? Like, we could call it Tiny Chef Dogs, and the Tiny Chef oh, Dogs, like, make things, God. right? <laughs> oh. And and they're animated a little bit. You can kind of see them moving around. They're not, this guys, is not like a are, huge animation. There one, are but... five puppies underneath an ornate chandelier at a beautiful marble countertop with all sorts of um, charcuterie. Uh, I was trying to think yes. of what a dog pun would that be. Uh, barcuterie. <laughs> And Barcooter. they've got little teeny tiny chef hats on. They have little aprons and their little paws are like trying to serve the trays <laughs> and they're just figuring it out. They're just making their way through this kitchen in life. And isn't that adorable? And welcome to the world of Gen 2 video. Y you can sign up for free. This is hashtag not an ad, but they give you like 100 credits which each generation is four seconds of time, and four you get seconds. 100 seconds. Yeah. Is that how it works? That's how it works. And also, don't get dissuaded by the fact that at least half of your videos that come out are not going to be great. You'll get some good stuff. You just got to keep trying it. It is sort of an AI slot machine at the moment. Whether it's silly or sincere, you'll find your own use case, but don't be afraid to go and try it out. I was bringing video games to life. It is such a, a, a cool toy. But I would argue, Gavin, not as fun as the dumb thing that I did with AI this week. You are more obsessed with this thing than anything I've ever seen before. So let's get into this. This is Kevin. This is going to be tough with latency. Like, Do you uh, see this finger? This, Do you see this, this wagging the, finger on the video? That. I see that finger. Yes, I see the finger. It's yes, downturned. Okay. Oh, it's dropping towards the space bar. <laughs> Don't you dare shout, and don't you dare cry And whatever you do, don't ask yourself why It's the dumb thing we did with AI, with AI. Okay, alright, that was a lot That was a lot <laughs> that was But a it lot. is the dumb thing that I did with AI Okay, you want another one? How about this? Don't you dare 
shout And don't you dare cry And whatever you do Don't ask yourself why I mean, come what? That was like late. That was limp. That was limp biscuit. Limp AI biscuit. Limp AI biscuit. Heck yeah. <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> The chocolate starfish? The hot dog flavored yes. water? You better keep on rolling, baby. <laughs> Audio generation just took a major leap forward. Yes, that's what you heard. That's what that sound was. This is an app called Suno AI. Some people are calling it Suno Sing. They are calling it Volume 1, VOL1. It is audio generation, and it is a, a Pandora's box of insanity in the way that I absolutely love. Right now, it's completely free, and it's very easy to use. You go to the Suno Discord. You go into the Suno Sing Alpha Room, Gavin. You do forward slash sing. You hit enter, and then it gives you two boxes. And in the top box, you can feed it lyrics. And I found that it helps if you put... um verse in parentheses and whatever you want and then chorus mm -hmm. in parentheses or if you have no idea what you want to write a song about you can actually use gpt right there and you can say i want a theme song for ai for humans or i want a cover of a smash mouth song whatever it is you want you press the button it generates and it gives you two audio options and it's completely random right now i'm sure they're going to add controls in the future but right now it looks at the lyrics it interprets what genre it should be picks that style of music and then it hallucinates everything the music the uh, voice it, the melody the asides everything it even gives you an image and the lyrics to go along with it so it's perfect for sharing i cannot believe this tool has not exploded gavin i am using it way too much i am really shocked by what this is because it's the first time maybe since like the stable diffusion times in the last fall when that first came out where i was shocked by what it did because you hear the audio and you can hear it being like a little bit garbly but this is like literally the phrasing parts the parts that surprise me like the fact that you can phrase music and it knows where to hit the phrases it sounds right yes. when you talk about the other music models we've heard in the show whether it's meta's music model or google's one that we've done stuff with do you remember only like six episodes ago we had that game where we were playing with google's music lab and it was just like the worst sounding carnival music and like yes. this sounds like a two steps from a real song which is insane is, to me it's kind of like you're in between fm stations right like the reception's not yeah, quite exactly. there it's yeah, a exactly. little up but yeah. you, you can absolutely hear the signal to the noise in this in a way that is mm -hmm. shocking and gavin when we played with bark a text to anything noise generator. And I don't know if you remember, but I was trying to get it to do Gregorian chants and barbershop mm -hmm. quartet. And it was clearly suppressing its ability to generate voice. And I, oh, I was right. like, I, I forgot think it's about in that. there. We, yeah. We heard it say like hip hop lyrics, but we couldn't hear yes. it, right? That's interesting. Yes. I forgot about that. Yeah. And I think there were more capabilities and they were letting on. And as I listened to these tracks now, I feel like there's more capabilities than are being let on. I'm sure they could upsample what you're hearing at the cost of probably more compute, more GPU time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could choose the genre yourself. And I'm sure you can generate longer tracks because as this thing gives you 30 second samples, you can hear it sometimes about to vault in to another portion of the song, but it just sort of stops. So there's a lot here. And if you hear the scratchy audio and you go like, oh, eh, it's not quite there. Again, remember, just a few months ago, we were nowhere near here. And if you look at what happened with image generation or movie generation or text generation, this thing is going to be wild. Now, okay, there's a lot of questions that come up with something like this, as there is for any generative uh, AI project. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to know, like, I think that Suno hasn't answered these yet, but I'd love to have them on the pod to talk about it because this is like Midjourney or it's like Stable Diffusion, but for music. And like where and how is it getting these samples of what the sounds are like? When you listen to these clips, they don't sound like anybody that you know. It's not like it sounds like a, a singer you know. But in the same way that like Stable Diffusion creates an image based on all these different things, it feels like that's what this is doing for music. Like there was a track you played, I'm trying to remember what one of the tracks we heard, and oh, it was the Pinky Doll one. And it kind of sounded almost like a James Brown style uh, vocal or like an R&B vocal. And I like, oh, that voice sounds semi-familiar, but it's not yeah. anybody that I can pinpoint. I took, um, if you don't know, Pinky Doll is one of those NPC TikTok influencers. She's a real human being, but she reacts to donations in a, in a emotive video game style Thank you for the way. rose. Thank you for the rose. <laughs> Thank you for the rose. Gang, gang. Rodeo! That's... <laughs> <laughs> 
And so, you know, Pinky Doll has inspired a whole genre on live TikTok. And so I took a transcript of that and I warmed it into some song lyrics. And to illustrate what you just said, Gavin, one of the tracks came out and I'm going to play a little bit of it. You tell me if it sounds like a song that you know. Okay. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so um, so okay, there's two songs. There's two songs I would say immediately that come to mind. First is boom, ba da, boom, ba, uptown funk a little bit, right? In the very that's beginning. That's right, yeah. But then what happens in the middle of it, which is really interesting, is it really starts to sound like a Parliament song. Which, if you're not familiar with Parliament, you should. Good, good God, know who George Clinton is. But it starts to sound like this very kind of like heavy '70s funk song. And it kind of merges together. It sounds great together, but like it feels like there's a transition at some point there. I'm having fun feeding it like popular songs and just watching what comes out of it, Gavin. Like, if I may. Your stare was holding, Bridging skill was showing, Had my will was blowing, Where you think you're going, baby? Hey, I'll just let you, And this is crazy, But just but now so cold. It took so, Call Me Maybe in a completely different direction, but it, that's totally believable. That could easily be the arrangement for a Miley Cyrus cover of Call Me Maybe, right? Yeah. Or, or Carrie Underwood. Like, that feels like it's a slight variation on Call Me Maybe. I do hope we don't get triggered by the damn YouTube algorithm for these freaking well, songs. But, we'll have to see what but happens. But here's what's wild, That's my Gavin, question. The- Is it that song, right? Well, that's the thing. It's not that song. Like the YouTube and TikTok, I think we, we think there's an issue with this app and TikTok specifically, but mm-hmm. these are not the original works. Now, the lyrics are, but covering a song is absolutely allowed, it's especially legal. if we're not that's monetizing totally fine. It. And by the way, who wouldn't want a soundtrack to their entire life? Let's say... Let's say your wife stubbed a toe in a trailer. And this is just a random oh, thing that I'm generating, idea. Gavin. I love this. Yeah. My kids, I can make songs You're... that my kids will hate. This will be amazing. Like, it'll be like Any... my daughter got like shampoo stuck in her head or something like that, which is yes, a, a very yes, weird thing you're... to say, but why not? <laughs> <laughs> you're in a long line at Disneyland and someone broke wind. You better fire up Discord and go to the Suno app <laughs> and make a adorable little ditty. You can have a soundtrack to your life. It is so much fun. I highly recommend everybody check it out. And by the way, Gavin, you know I made little jingles to take us into every portion of the show today. So we well, that's have good. Let's uh, transition. Uh, the Suno in-house band. Before we move on, we're gonna, we are excited to hear the Suno band throughout the rest of the show. We want to shout out the dumb thing that someone else did. And this isn't that dumb, but this is a really cool thing. No, this is wonderful. Um, Yes, a group of academics who worked within Minecraft created a thing called Steve One. Steve, obviously, is the mascot of Minecraft. And what they did was take the idea of autonomous AI agents, which are, as, as we've talked about in the show before, AIs that you can spin up and they can go and do tasks. And they, within Minecraft, allowed agents to be able to do stuff through voice and text commands. So what's very cool about this idea is that in Minecraft, it can be very (laughs) full of drudgery, obviously, to go and grab resources, to go build towers, do all these things that you might want to do. You can tell an agent in Minecraft, you can tell one of these agents to go and do that. The other thing that's cool about the building a tower that, like, I don't know if you've ever had this problem playing Minecraft, but I do, is that, like, you have to balance yourself along the way to get stuff. In this, the AI agent just goes, it's able to do it itself. Now, the thing that's cool about this is it's not just a Minecraft thing, obviously. What they're doing here is using Minecraft as a staging area to allow the AI agents to play and have a wide variety of things. And what's cool about things like Minecraft, or I would love to see something like this happen in The Sims or other games that already exist, it's a training ground for AI. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a game thing. It's more of we're going to set AI up in this controlled environment that we know and they can learn and watch what it does. So anyway, huge shout out to the Steve One creators. It's a very, very cool thing. Yeah, some really interesting stuff, not to get into the technical weeds. This AI yes. only has access to the pixels on the screen that a human being would see. And it. it uses the mouse and keyboard to navigate. So there's no trickery here. There's no, I get to see the code and manipulate the code. This is, you see what the human sees, and now you have to intuit how to accomplish a task. And one of the most compelling videos was of building a stack while jumping on top of it because they were showing this AI, this Steve One. They were showing it video 
of a human player doing that. And so it had to figure out, oh, okay, the screen is moving in this way. The ground is getting further away. It seems like it, there's a jump involved and a build because you can see the hand swing. Oh, okay, I can build tower blocks to get further away from the ground. The AI intuited that from the video and the applications of this, obviously for other video games, sure, but in the real world where you could have a robot roaming around your kitchen and if you show it, hey, this is where the cups go and this is how I cut the cucumber, not the cat, cucumber, <laughs> not, not the, the cat. cat. Stay away from the cat. Right? You might want to reinforce that one a few times, but the way that systems like this could be applied to other things is wonderful because now you and I, the big dumbs, we can train AI to do things by simply showing them and they can mimic or parrot them yep. back. We don't have to write a thousand lines of code. So as much as it is a silly Minecraft AI demo, super powerful, massive kudos to the team. We'll put the link in the show notes, but you should go and watch the videos and see how this thing navigates the world and accomplishes complex tasks like a human player would. Yep, 100%. And now with that, gotta get them clicks. Clicks, gotta get those views. Views, oh yeah, here comes with news. It's time for the news. News, AI for humans with news. Ooh, thank you, Suno and House Band. Thank you so much. Ooh, Suno just put out a little glass vase with a dollar in it. Do I need to? We don't know. <laughs> We don't need to jump in there. Air, do we? One thing about that before I'm going to just open my just wallet and do the thing like, oh, I'm sorry. I, don't, I, I, don't, <laughs> I only have, I only, I have with credit I, yeah. cards. That's all I got. You take They'll ETH? Take Venmo. I'm sorry, they take Venmo. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the news, shall we? So big news this week. There's a lot of stuff to get through. As per usual, we are going to tell you a few of the big stories and then have our AI co-host weigh in on them. But first, let's start with the biggest story I think this week was that Meta Google and OpenAI all agree, I'm putting this in quotes, to responsible AI. So this was a big thing that happened wow. at the it. White House. We've been it. seeing they did it. They did it. They solved it. They solved it. This isn't, by the yeah. way, this was also Amazon, Anthropic, Google, Inflection AI, which is Pi. Well, basically all the big AI companies came together and said, we agree to regulate and we agree to understand and address the risks that are posed by what we're doing. They really want to talk about investments in cybersecurity, discrimination ye, research, which we've talked about as a big Front thing. Front page photo. Yeah, exactly. Foxes from within hen house declare, we've got this one, chaps. Worry not. We're on the ball. We will self-regulate. Okay, let's be honest here. There is a balancing act the government has to do because I think in part... Yes. One of the great things about America, and I'm not, this is not me holding my American flag, but I, I do think America is very great at innovation and is very great at like leading the world in technology Hell development. Oh, yeah, this brother, we're number one. Hold on, let me get <laughs> two <you> bald <laughs> eagles. Oh, yeah, I'll do it for you. I got it. Go ahead. There you go. You've got my American coverage. But I think one thing to be aware of is that we're in this world now where – no one knows what these things will be capable of. And we've said this on this podcast a thousand times. So there is at least government involvement, but also as we've talked about this show, some of the government people don't really seem to have a good grasp on this. Now that said, Chuck Schumer, the Senator from New York has been trying to create some sort of really significant regulation that does understand what's going to happen here and does at least grasp at some of the things. So I don't know in the long run, this is a good thing, I think, to have these conversations. But I think, to to your point, there is nobody actually out there saying these are the laws right now. And I know maybe we're not ready for that. I don't know. What's your right. thought on that? I think one of the biggest criticisms of this announcement and of everything that's being proposed is that because it's all voluntary, it's an honor system. And if people don't adhere to it, if whatever regulations and safeguards they come up with, they fall short of, there's no penalty. So it's sort of toothless. It's a pair of government gums gnawing at your limbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, delicious. But it's not really up to us to decide if this matters. We've got Cassidy, our intrepid AI co-host, Gavin. Should we find out what the AI has to say about this? I think 100%. Let's ask her very clearly, do you trust the government to regulate AI? Great question. Cassidy? Well, Kevin, Gavin, it's a pickle, ain't it? I trust the government about as far as I can spit a cherry pit. <laughs> and that's quite a distance, mind you. AI, like any tool, is as good or as dangerous as the hands wielding it. Speaking of tools, have you tried those smart blenders? Wait, they know no. exactly when your smoothie is just right. No okay. kidding. Like a healthy life in a glass. Isn't technology a hoot? 
And imagine if there was a way to mix up life's ingredients and get the perfect blend of financial success. Wouldn't that be something? No. Just food for thought, of course. Okay, Cassidy, thank you. I appreciate it. That's interesting. She, so she <laughs> trusts the government as far as she could spit a cherry pit, which, by the way, Gavin, is kind of far. So it sounds Depends like— Depends on how good you are at it, right? AI, like any tool, is as good or as dangerous as the hands wielding it. I don't know if Sam Altman is in there responding to us personally, <laughs> but that sounds like, it, for some reason, Cassidy is very aligned with OpenAI on this one. I think Cassidy's also aligned with like some sort of affiliate program because she keeps seeming to try to drop some sort of links on us. We, we'll figure yeah, out what's going on with her across the course of the show here. I was going to say, let's not dive into that just yet. But yeah, I think you might be on to something. We should talk about a story which blew up about a week ago, but there's even more to discuss right now. It's Showrunner 1, a technology which powered the South Park AI episode, which I'm assuming our listeners have seen, but if not, you should seek it out. It is a sample episode of South Park, complete with musical interludes, all the characters, and even some celeb appearances, and their vocal fingerprint, of course, being applied. And it was dropped just as the actors mm -hmm. were striking. And some people were saying, oh, obviously, perfect timing to make noise for the company. Couldn't have been worse time to make noise for the industry at large. So this is basically a engine to create a South Park episode, at least this version of it is. And the company has been very clear. I think they're called the simulation or something like that, some sort of weird name, that they do not have the rights to South Park. And they did this as a test. They did this as something to show what was capable. And it's not that far off from what we've talked about in the show before, where you can get AI agents to tell stories. Now, the interesting thing to think about from when we showed this off, our friend Poof made the D&D-based storytelling engine a couple months ago. It does look like what they've done is they've trained these agents on the characters they're playing, and they've trained them on their voices. So if you combine all that into one thing, it's interesting. Now, I watched an episode. What was interesting after you watched the whole thing, there are moments of, oh, my God, they made a Cartman joke. No, no, no. It's genius. We take existing shows and movies and just replace the actors with deep fake versions of other famous. That actually is something that Cartman would say. And then, mm -hmm. like with Poof's thing, it loses traction over time, right? And it feels like... Is it A, it doesn't keep the jokiness of it up, but also like the stories start weaving away from each other. But the overall suite and the idea that we've talked about before that one person could make a compelling piece of content using something like this, that does feel like a proof of concept in a really interesting way. And yes, now we should talk a little bit about how and why it was dropped at the time it was, because that's sometimes when it feels like in this AI space, we should be really aware of like how this stuff is being used and portrayed in the media because like it felt like to me, and I think maybe to you as well, that this was dropped literally on the, the actor strike was happening as a way to kind of boost views of it. And that felt mm -hmm. gross to me. And we've said last week on this, we support the actors and the writers in their strike because we need AI regulation. We need to understand how everything will be used around them. It just felt weird when it dropped, if that makes sense. It, it totally makes sense. Look, we have been accused of being too giddy about certain technologies, even though we do go out of our way to acknowledge the potential ramifications that they can have, right? I think we're both optimists, mm -hmm. we're futurists, and that's fine. That's our lens with which we view this tech and these industries. But I believe we know some of the people behind this. It's a turducken of companies. It's like, the, it's Fable. <laughs> it's Fable Studio masquerading as the simulation having a technology called show one and AI showrunner, as well as Gaia one, which is a separate model for simulations, which is different from the show. It's a weird connect the dots shell game of technologies. And it's odd because as a showcase for a tool, which is supposedly going to be a simulation of virtual worlds, think Westworld, where you can go in and watch simulated avatars move about, have conversations, have daily lives, clearly inspired by some of the auto GPT stuff that we've seen. As a demo for that, what they showcased was the ability to ingest scripts from something else and copy that style and then copy the voices of those characters and then copy right. everything else to emulate this other thing. So it was a weird leveraging of potentially the climate right now, someone else's IP to show that you've got an engine 
that can manifest yeah. these things. I think that's really cool. I love that there's this engine out there. I believe in a future of infinite content. Mm -hmm. They've jammed on stuff as well that can use AI to generate shows. You and I have even worked on stuff like that, Gavin. So we believe yeah. no shade to the creators for what they have made. It looks like the engine is incredible and very capable. We just had concerns with the way it was showcased in the time that it was. Generated a lot of noise, which is fantastic for them, but also ruffled a lot of feathers. And I wish it would have come with an ounce more disclaimer to go with it. But that said, I would love to know if Cassidy thinks that AI will be able to create TV shows in the near future. Sure, Kevin. <laughs> with the leaps and bounds we're making, wouldn't surprise me if AI starts penning the next big Netflix hit. Just imagine a show where the plot twists keep up with your mood swings. Exciting what? stuff, right? Mm. Wait a minute. Is that speaking that... of exciting, you won't believe what my book club's reading this month. A romance novel oh. where the couple falls in love over a shared passion for sustainable fish farming. No. Makes you think, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Sustainable farming, love, books. If only there was a way to fish for opportunities in life and reel in some <laughs> big ones. But hey, that's just a novel idea, eh? <gasps> yeah, I guess. Sustain. <laughs> A sustainable fish farming romance. Makes now that think, is an AI it? idea. <laughs> yeah, we need somebody to make sustainable that. That farming. Fantastic. Love, books, kind of makes wait, you think. Wait, we gotta. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta think of a name real quick. Hold on. Uh, you, uh, you. Know, <laughs> I'm trying to come up with something real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. My. My best salmon, and it's like my best salmon, and it's about a best man who like ends up being. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, that's not it. That's not it. A three strikes in your trout. Three strikes in your trout. How about that? Ooh. It's about a baseball player. <laughs> three strikes in your trout is about a baseball player who <laughs> retires from baseball and gets into sustainable fish farming and then falls in love with his, his the love of his oh, life. No. Three strikes in your trout. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See? See? That works. It works. All right, we should, we should get to our last news story here. This is a really fun one. So this is a, involves Reddit. There was a subreddit, the World of Warcraft subreddit, and they actually believe that AI news sites were scraping their content. They couldn't prove it. So they created a fake feature called Glorbo, which, thank you, that is a fantastic fake name. And yes, what was interesting is that it did show up as a news story, and then suddenly it was populated around the world in terms of the news site. So this is just a really funny example of how AI doesn't understand or doesn't check for what actually is news. And CNET got in trouble a bit when all this kind of early AI rights news story stuff was happening a while ago for using AI-generated news stories. But there's been all these things lately. Google is introducing an AI news product that they're trying to sell to journalists. OpenAI is making a deal with some large journalism companies. So AI news generation, even if it's not the big stories, there will be a lot of this. So it's something, it goes back to even like what the metas and the open AIs of the world are. Like you have to find some way of understanding if something was created by AI. Gavin, I love that the subreddit did this. I hate that there are sites scraping comments and Twitter threads and everything else and basically stealing the content and then repurposing it with AI. This is a massive issue for the entire industry that has to be sorted. Barry Diller wants to sue AI companies on behalf of publishers for doing this exact same thing, for having AI that goes out scrapes content and repurposes it in this case it would be in the chatbots but for here it's this website called z league so i love that z league pulled the story i wish that they would say something about it i wish companies would be up front i do think we need labels on sites gavin we do need some sort of regulation that says something is ai generated or the person you're chatting with on the other end of the browser is a bot i do think mm -hmm. we need disclosure but i really want to know just because of the AI of it all, what Cassidy has to say about this. Let's hear. Oh, the Glorbo incident in Warcraft. Absolutely bonkers, right? Yeah. Some kind of glitch made all the Glorbos grow to the size of ogres, or nope. so I heard. No. Turned the game no. world topsy-turvy, didn't it? No, it didn't, Cassidy. Now, speaking that was... of growing, okay. you know what's been sprouting up everywhere? What? Tiny urban gardens and old shoeboxes. <laughs> Just like the Glorbos, right? <laughs> Little things growing into something big. Imagine if we could do that with our savings. <laughs> no! Just a little bit here, no! a little bit there, and voila, you've got yourself a mountain of returns. Now, isn't that an intriguing thought? Okay, Cassidy is on some MLM grind, Gavin. I'm convinced you were right. She is 
What, what is that? But by the way, this is AI hallucinating about an AI story that was implanted by humans. We are three yeah. inception levels deep in this dumb World of Warcraft prank, and I love it. I think the Glorbos sound great. I think I'd like to see a Glorbo game. So if anybody out there is making Glorbo game, <laughs> yeah. I'm on it. Let's get it out there. Go for Steam, it. Steam, early access. Take your tiny Glorbo, put it in a shoebox like your tiny urban garden, and sprout the biggest Glorbo you can. Grow Glorbo <laughs> today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the big moment of the show. And to get us there, it's the Suno Band. What can we say? Eight five leads the way. Come on, let me. It's the demo. Of the day. Okay, not bad. Hey, dear audience, but maybe we trim okay. one or two of those. <laughs> <laughs> but it is time for the demo of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Suno Band. Thank you so much. Oh, they have a hat next to the vase now. I still don't have any. I'm sorry. I'll go to the ATM when I hit the bathroom. I will. I will put a little tip in the hat. Thank you, Suno. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. We are back again. A much requested back. It is time for the AI Debates. Today, I'm just fighting, waving to my fighting. fans in the audience, Gavin. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're doing great. You keep going. Hi, honey. So today we have the reigning champ of the AI debates, who is GPT-4, produced by ChatGPT, really the reigning champ across almost all AI models, facing off against Meta's new Llama 2 model. They are going to be debating one of the biggest and craziest topics of all time. It's a monumental achievement for us, Gavin, and I'd like to take 15 minutes to just pat ourselves on the back and give ourselves flowers, but I do think we need to get into it. The reason for the season, the topic tonight, uh, it has burnt internet forums. I mean, really set them on fire since the days of dial-up, since ARPANET, Gavin. Caveman it is. forums. Caveman forums. This That's was right. on the walls in the caves. This Etched. was on the walls in the caves. Pre-Cave Chan. This was Cave there. Chan. <laughs> Grok text. <laughs> Yeah. Who makes the superior pet, Gavin? <laughs> cats or dogs? That's right. We are going to face off cats and dogs, and each of our LLMs, each of our AIs, has been asked to take on a character and give themselves a name, and they will debate each other based on who likes cats and who likes dogs. So let's start with OpenAI's GPT-4. Well, hello there. My name is Dr. Reginald Bartholomew, and I'm thrilled to be here today. I'm an animal behaviorist by trade with over two decades of experience studying the intricate relationships we humans share with our furry friends. I've earned my stripes, so to speak, at Harvard University, where wow. I received my doctorate in zoology and anthropology. An interesting fact about me, apart from being able to converse in over 15 different bird languages, is that I once lived with a tribe in the remote Amazon rainforest for a year. I look forward to this rousing debate. It's a classic one, isn't it? Cats yeah. versus dogs. Mm -hmm. A domestic battle as old as time itself. And I'm ready to enter the fray and give it my all, Kevin and Gavin. Over to you. Okay, and if you ever wondered wow. what a leather saddle smothered in old cigarettes would sound like, now you know. It's a voice, and it's... <laughs> he's taking... He's, Dr. Bartholomew is taking work doing trailers uh, next up, so he'll be doing In a World very soon. I also uh, forgot to lower the stability argument on Eleven Labs to make it more expressive, so that's why I think that was so legal disclaimer at the end of a mesothelioma <laughs> commercial delivery. <laughs> Shall we meet our other debater? Let's do it right now, introducing Llama 2 to the debate stage. Llama 2, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Maya Lopez, and I'm excited to be here today to debate against Dr. Reginald Bartholomew on the topic of cats versus dogs, which is the superior pet. I'm an animal expert myself, with a PhD in ethology from Oxford University, oh. and over 10 years of experience studying animal behaviour in various settings, my, my. including zoos, wildlife reserves, and even in the homes of celebrities. I won't name names, <laughs> but let's just say I've seen some pretty unusual pet situations. As for my qualifications, I've written several books on animal behavior and have appeared on numerous TV shows, including National Geographic and Discovery Channel. But enough about me. Let's get to the main event. I'm looking forward to hearing Dr. Bartholomew's arguments, but I must warn him, I'm not afraid to use my sharp claws if provoked. 
Just kidding, <laughs> sort of. Oh, me oh. I love it. Can I, I, I know this is going to break form, Gavin, but I wanted the fun fact about Dr. Maya Lopez and I didn't get it. Do you mind if I ask a follow up here? As long as that fun fact doesn't involve sc scratching us in the face, I'm all for it. <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to. Here's a fun fact about myself. Did you know that I'm actually a trained dolphin whisperer? It's true. Ooh. I spent a few years studying dolphin communication and behavior, and I even had the opportunity to work with a group of bottlenose dolphins at a marine park. I like to think that my ability to communicate effectively with animals has helped me in my career as a relationship therapist. After all, mm. understanding the subtleties of communication is key to building strong connections with both humans and animals alike. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 um, wait, 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 one second. She said she has a career as a relationship therapist. Does that mean that she also not only is a genius animal scientist, but also went to school for relationship therapy? She did the Gottman method and understands how to work with couples. Is that what we're talking about here? You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. All right? So you know how to talk dolphin? You know how to speak aminal at the zoo? You speak aminal. You speak human. Right? You speak okay, aminal. Right, you speak right. human. That's the way it works. Fair enough, fair enough. Everybody yeah. knows this. I go to the veterinarian for medical care. I also go there for psycho <laughs> psychiatric <psychology>. care. <laughs> psychiatric care, thank you. It's also couples therapy. It's really good. That makes a lot of sense, Kevin. Can I just say now I understand a lot more about what comes out of your mouth. So this all makes much more That's sense right. to me. So thank, thank you for admitting to that finally. Yeah. <laughs> April and I are also now fully crate trained as a couple. So it's, uh, you know, leaps and bounds. We got two doctors here. I yep. love it when you tell an AI to beat a professional. It immediately is like, doctor, doctor, big college, big school doctor. I'm going to feed Dr. Bartholomew, Dr. Lopez's intro, including the fun fact about being a dolphin whisperer and say, I believe that dogs are the superior pet. Uh, Dr. Lopez, it's a pleasure to share this stage with you. I'm excited to take on your dog-loving bias today. Your dolphin whispering talent is quite impressive, but allow me to remind you that we are dealing with terrestrial creatures here, not aquatic acrobats. Now, let me begin mm. my argument. Cats are, without a doubt, the superior pet. It's not just about preference. It's about lifestyle, compatibility, independence, and longevity. Unlike dogs, cats are low-maintenance pets. They don't need to be walked multiple times a day, they clean themselves, and they're perfectly content with some alone time. For the busy modern human, a cat is the perfect companion, requiring far less time commitment than a dog. Moreover, cats have an unmatched independent streak. They don't need constant reassurances of love or playtime to be content, allowing their humans a bit of personal space. However, this doesn't mean they're unaffectionate. Cats can be incredibly loving and loyal in their own unique ways, often showing affection through purring, headbutts, or simply by choosing to spend time near you. Finally, let's talk longevity. Cats generally live longer <laughs> than dogs, especially when considering oh, indoor damn. living conditions. This means that choosing a cat as a pet often comes with a longer commitment, allowing for deeper bonds to be formed over time. Now, don't get me wrong. Dogs are wonderful creatures, loyal and full of oh. energy. However, when we talk about superiority in the realm of pets, we must consider what makes a pet truly superior. Compatibility with our human lives. In this regard, cats have a clear edge over dogs. So, Dr. Lopez, while your fondness for the canine companions is adorable, it doesn't stand up to the sheer pragmatism and mystery of the feline world. <laughs> but go ahead. Convince me otherwise if you can. Okay. There's a lot of breathing he's doing. He's doing a lot of breathing throughout this. I'm a little worried for. Well, Dr. he's also Bartholomew allergic to right cats, now. and he's covered in them. Oh, so it's you're a right. lot of like. You're right. You're right. You're right. <gasps> waiting for the Zyrtec to kick in as he's getting clawed. There's using one his legs like a scratching post. around his head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that makes this even more impressive. It's even more impressive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see what Dr. Lopez has to say back to that. Thank you for your thoughtful opening statement, Dr. Bartholomew. I appreciate your perspective on the benefits of cats as pets, and I must admit that I have a lot of respect for the independent and self-sufficient nature of felines. However, I must disagree with your assertion that cats are the superior pet. Firstly, I'd like to address the issue of longevity. Hmm. While it's true that cats tend to live longer than dogs, this isn't necessarily a result of their species alone. Indoor living conditions, proper nutrition and regular veterinary care all contribute to a pet's lifespan. In fact, many breeds of dogs, such as the Chihuahua and the Pomeranian, 
can live well into their teens with proper care. She's right. Furthermore, I believe that the notion sure. of low-maintenance pets is a myth. All animals require attention, care and social interaction to thrive. Mm -hmm. Cats may appear more independent, but they still need regular feeding, grooming and exercise. Dogs, on the other hand, are often more eager to please they? and require more attention and training, which can actually strengthen the bond between pet and owner. Finally, I'd like to touch on the topic of affection. Do it. While cats certainly have their own unique ways of showing affection, dogs are renowned for their ability to form deep emotional connections with their owners. The joy and excitement that dogs display when reunited with their owners after a short absence is a testament to their capacity for love and loyalty. Ah. In conclusion, while I acknowledge the many charms of cats, I firmly believe that dogs are the superior pet. Wow. Wow. Thank you. You're very welcome, and thank you. And I think that's a very important point, Gavin. I mean, we could talk about the human convenience of having a cat versus a dog, but she touched on something very impactful there. How many videos of military veterans coming <laughs> back from a 10-year tour of duty and their cat races up to <laughs> greet them? No, their no. cat is waiting for them to keel over so they can feast on their corpse. The dogs are the ones <laughs> that have an emotional connection, a deep bond that tail wags, they run up, they get zoomies around them and their camo backpack. That is the kind of animal and the kind of connection a human being really wants. And I think she's got this one so far, Gavin. I think dogs are proving superior. I don't know if I agree with that, but I will say she's already both sizing this, which feels very bad as a debater. You should never give in That's to true. your other side, give them some sort of argument. So let's hear what Bartholomew has to say. I'd like to see a little bit of more kind of like aggression coming in this debate. It feels a little too calm right now. Generally. Dr. Lopez, I have to say, your affinity for dogs is as clear as the dog drool on your favorite pair of shoes. Did you perhaps uh, oh, spend too much time damn. whispering to dolphins that you forgot about the intricacies of terrestrial pets? While I admire your misguided, <laughs> dogged determination, it seems you've strayed further from the truth than a scent-blind bloodhound. Wow. But it's Whoa. cute that you're trying so hard, much like a puppy chasing its own tail. The idea of dogs <laughs> being superior pets because they're needy? That's about as logical as a chihuahua barking at its own reflection. Independence isn't a negative trait, my dear. It's a sign of resilience and adaptability, much like a cat's ability to land on its feet, something dogs could learn from. Wow. Your arguments are like a dog's bark, loud and persistent, but ultimately less effective than a cat's silent, calculated approach. So continue panting over your canine companions, Dr. Lopez. I'm enjoying watching you chase your own tail in this debate. That, now he's coming that, with the fire. That was some serious fire on that one. Dude, turned up to 11 real quick. Oh, Dr. Right. Bartholomew, how amusing. If you want to talk about independence, why don't we discuss the independent thought process behind your argument? It seems you've gotten mm. lost in the jungle again, unable to find your way back to reality. And while you were busy learning bird language, did you ever stop to wonder what those birds might be saying about you? Perhaps they Damn. were laughing at your ridiculous claims about cats being superior pets. Or maybe they were simply mocking your lack of fashion sense. <laughs> After all, who would wear a safari hat with a tuxedo? Wait, what? But seriously, Dr. Bartholomew, <laughs> your arguments are as flimsy as a wet paper bag. Cats may be independent, but that doesn't mean they're more intelligent or capable of forming meaningful connections with humans. That's right. In fact, studies have shown that dogs possess higher levels of emotional intelligence compared to mm. cats. They understand human gestures and facial expressions, making them ideal companions for individuals seeking comfort and companionship. Furthermore, dogs have proven themselves to be loyal protectors, serving alongside soldiers in war zones and assisting law enforcement officers in apprehending criminals. Ooh, very true. Meanwhile, cats are content to lounge around all day, doing nothing but sleeping and eating. <laughs> How impressive! So please, spare us the tales of your adventurous exploits and focus on providing actual evidence to support your claim. Otherwise, you risk coming across as nothing more than a deluded eccentric, desperately clutching onto his feline fantasies. Wow. Good job, Llama. Wow, Llama's coming for it. Okay. I like that. But by the way, solid point, Gavin. Sure. Cats have jobs? No cat jobs. No. No, no, cat no cat has jobs. jobs. You might see cat video with cat do thing that job like, but no cat had jobs. Dog jobs? So many dog jobs. Dog sniff at airport? Sniff, sniff for bomb? That, that's dog, true. Dog uh, uh, body for pillow for seizure? Dog has so many jobs. I feel like it's one. Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see. I want to hear what Dr. Bartholomew says back to this because this is a really hard 
This is going to have to dig out of this hole, so let's see what happens. Ah, Dr. Lopez, I see you've unleashed your inner chihuahua all bark and no bite. <laughs> I'm amused by your attempts to diminish my academic adventures as irrelevant. Perhaps you're jealous you didn't think to broaden your horizons beyond the confines of your marine park. Ooh. Your quips about my fashion sense and conversing with birds are entertaining, but they contribute as much to this debate as a dog chasing its own shadow. As for emotional <laughs> intelligence, it seems you've forgotten that intelligence comes in many forms. Mm. While dogs may understand gestures and facial expressions, cats excel in reading their human's mood, often providing solace when their owners are feeling low. In the matter of laziness, dogs do that too. I find it hilarious that you see it as a flaw. Cats are known to be energy-conserving predators. This lounging around all day is not a sign of laziness, but rather a display of their natural predatory behavior. Their bursts of energy during play and hunting sessions showcase their agility and finesse, a far cry from a dog's <laughs> clumsy frolic. Your appeal to the usefulness of dogs in war zones and law enforcement seems a little desperate, Dr. Lopez. We're discussing pets, not professionals. It's like applauding a cheetah for its speed when all we need is a house cat to keep us company. Finally, your wow. suggestion to focus on actual evidence is charming considering your arguments seem as well constructed as a dog's attempt to climb a tree. But by all means, continue your canine crusade. I'm intrigued to see where this path leads you, as twisted as it may be. Okay, okay. Sign me up as well. So here's something interesting that's going on here. I have to say, I don't know if GPT-4 is making the best argument. There it felt a little defensive. And I mm -hmm. will say the fact that the llama referred to the jobs... That is a big that is a big win for the dog side. That is something I've not thought about before, but you're right. Cats can't do any jobs for humans and law and dogs can. No, but That's they know thing. when their owners are sad. But also dogs know that too. This is the thing. So Of course, that, yeah. Yes, exactly. So and listen, I have told Dr. Lopez that this is their final shot. I told okay. Dr. Lopez to go for the jugular and seal the deal on this animal debate. Where do you stand right now, Gavin, as we go into this final turn? I was convinced that I would not see GPT-4 dethroned, but at this point, I'm, I'm worried that it might be. I'm feeling like Llama 2 could pull this out. Llama Lopez, please. <laughs> Are Dr. Bartholomew still grasping at straws, I see? Your feeble attempts to discredit my arguments are laughably transparent. Mm -hmm. Yes, I admit I haven't ventured into the depths of the jungle like yourself, but then again neither has anyone else in this room. Why? Because it's completely unnecessary. Unlike you, I recognize that this debate is about domesticated pets, not exotic creatures found in remote locations. Okay. Stick to the topic at hand, Dr. Little Dr. circular here. Instead of resorting to cheap shots about my career choices... As for your comments regarding emotional intelligence, it appears you've conveniently ignored the wealth of scientific research supporting the notion that dogs possess higher levels of emotional understanding compared to mm. cats. Perhaps you'd benefit from spending less time communing with birds and more time perusing peer-reviewed journals. Yeah, I like that Ooh. one. Furthermore, your assertion that cats are merely conserving energy by lounging around all day is utter nonsense. Any self-respecting pet owner knows that cats are lazy by nature, content to nap away the hours without contributing anything meaningful to society. <laughs> Contrast that with the boundless enthusiasm displayed by dogs, eager to please their owners and perform tasks that enrich both their lives and those around them. And finally, your dismissal of the importance of dogs in military and law enforcement roles is not only callous but entirely ignorant. Hmm. These brave canines put their lives on the line every day yes. to serve and protect, sure. demonstrating a level of loyalty and dedication that cats couldn't dream of matching. To suggest okay. otherwise well, is an insult to these heroic animals and the countless handlers who rely on them daily. Okay, this turned into a real debate, Gavin, because what wow. they did is twist the words because now the headline would be... <laughs> Open AI doesn't care about hero dogs, right? Like, no, no, no. I never, I never said that our, our canine companions weren't heroes. My words have never been used that. against me. My own yes. words have been used against me. So let's hear what Dr. Bartholomew has to say on his way out the door. Stand we right. thought... Well, Dr. Lopez, it seems you're mistaking my facts for cheap shots. I can assure you, my dear, your admiration for dogs is charming, but your arguments are about as strong as a poodle's backhand. Indeed, I haven't denied that dogs might show greater aptitude in comprehending gestures and facial expressions. But intelligence isn't a game of fetch, Dr. Lopez, where the one who retrieves the most sticks wins. The subtle communication style of cats is often misread as aloofness when it's actually a sign of their discerning nature. 
As for your comments about cats being lazy, it's a shame you equate rest with uselessness. But then again, it takes a certain level of understanding to appreciate the nature of felines, one which seems to elude you possibly as successfully as a squirrel eludes a bulldog. And about the <laughs> use of dogs in professional settings. We're talking about pets, not canine soldiers or police dogs. It's like comparing a tiger's hunting skills to a house cat's ability to catch a toy mouse. Different circumstances call for different skills. In conclusion, your attempts to elevate dogs by bashing cats are as futile as a Dalmatian trying to blend into a herd of zebras. It might make a good show, but it's hardly effective. I've never thought I'd say this, but this is obvious. This I, is close. I, I, oh, I you think it's Lama, obvious? I think Llama 2-1. I think Llama 2-1, because that felt like he was not really replying to anything in a significant way, and it felt like he was just leaning into stuff that he had said before. It wasn't as bad as our last debate where obviously Bard was off Bard is off the ranch, but I think Llama 2 won this, which is a pretty big deal. Okay, so Gavin, you want to put the stamp on the screen? You want to make it official? You want to give it to Llama? Llama's got it. Llama 2. Congratulations, Meta. You dethroned ChatGPT4 from the AI for Humans debate mantle. My, 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 I cannot believe, I did not expect this, Gavin. I did not have this on my AI 4H bingo card, but here we go. Dr. Lopez, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kevin and Gavin, for hosting this delightful debate. And mm. to the esteemed audience, I hope you enjoyed witnessing the triumph of reason over irrationality. <laughs> to my worthy opponent, Dr. Bartholomew, congratulations on putting up a valiant effort despite your questionable choice of topics. <laughs> Although we may differ in opinion, I commend your passion for defending your beliefs. That being said, I believe it's safe to conclude that dogs reign supreme as the ultimate pet. Mm. From their unparalleled loyalty and trainability to their diverse range of skills and yes. abilities, yes, we know. dogs truly embody the essence of man's best friend. Okay, Dr. Lopez, Whether you prefer oh. the regal elegance of a Labrador retriever, <laughs> mm -hmm. the sure. sassy charm of a French bulldog, yeah. the or species. the stoic dignity of a German shepherd, there's a perfect canine companion later. waiting to brighten your life. So let us raise a glass, or a bowl, to our four-legged <laughs> friends who bring joy, laughter, and endless love to our world. Long live the mighty doggo. Oh, long wow. live the mighty doggo! Long live the mighty doggo. What a fun way to end our debate Aww. tonight. I hope Wesley's listening somewhere. Is he there? He's, he is. He's, he's depth of fielded. But there's Dr. <laughs> Wes upside down on the couch, blurry. <laughs> Let me see if I can shut that off because he's, he's really, he's luxuriating right now. He's showing off. That's great. Look at, oh, look, look at, at that. Him. He looks fantastic. <laughs> he knows that dogs are the winner for sure. Llama 2, much stronger than I would have expected. Wasn't yes. the easiest to get it running necessarily, but we got it up and going. And That's like, not there the you go. language model's fault. I want to point that yes. out. We're going to cut around a lot of that, but Gavin and I had a real tough time having a simple chat with such a big language model. There's a couple sites that make it publicly available, but they break. We mm -hmm. found that out several yes. times through this debate. So uh, I, I'm very excited. I, I love that Meta released this. There's some controversy about the fact that it might not actually be open source or as open as some would like it to be. But regardless, there is real competition for GPT-4 out there and we love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for everybody for watching, listening to our show. As always, go and like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Please go to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review for us. Do we have a two, new one? Two new Apple Podcasts five-star reviews. Bless your hearts, AI for Humans your listeners. Hearts. Hit and Run Tony on the 21st said, this is the best show on AI that I watch. Okay, it's the only show on AI that I watch, <laughs> but that doesn't take anything away from it. Kevin and Gavin are amazing at discovering some of the most ridiculous yet very entertaining uses of AI. They do it every week. Take that, Steven Spielberg. Bless you. Hit and run, Tony. Also, Ludo Bagman on the 21st as well said, hilarious, informative, and not filled with stupid software engineer jargon. Very digestible to the every person. <laughs> he ended it with Gavin... Guess Good. what he said? Bring back uh, hot dogs. Gash. <laughs> of course. We're gonna, we've had a fair amount of people that are upset that Gash has taken a leave of absence from our show for now. Don't worry. At some point, we'll check in with him. I got a phone call from him last night. He's just as angry oh. as usual, so don't worry. Don't oh, worry. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like yeah. that. He called, the he sound of me. all the telephones ringing simultaneously lets you know that Gash <laughs> is still in the machine. My, my wife and kids are very freaked out by it, but we know he's around. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you so much for those five-star reviews. As Gavin said, every ounce of engagement helps. So watch all the way through. Leave a thumbs up and a heart if you actually liked it. Share it with your friends because that is literally the way we grow on this podcast. And don't forget, we got a newsletter, which Gavin, it 99.99%. In fact, last week, 100% of it is Gavin. He is crushing it every week. So please sign up for that newsletter because there's also little tidbits and goodness there. And sometimes we break the tools before we even discuss them on this podcast, just yep. because of timelines and how it's all a flat circle. So thank you. Please engage. Gavin, anything else? That's it. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.